Assalamu alaikum and hello again. Now, this is the last lesson in chapter 6. It is 6.16, Satellite Systems. You can find it in your book at page 128. We often say that computer technology is ubiquitous. This means that computer technology is everywhere, in all parts of the world and in all aspects of our lives. One particular device that is becoming increasingly ubiquitous is satellite navigation, or satnav. Many drivers own a standalone system, and cars are increasingly manufactured to include a satnav device built into the dashboard. Most smartphones incorporate satnav hardware and apps, making them invaluable to drivers and pedestrians alike. Two technologies essential to satellite navigation are GPS and GIS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System and it's been around for some time. Like many other technologies, it was developed for military use, but was then opened up to the public. GPS is a technology that allows you to determine exactly where you are on the Earth's surface. It does this with the help of satellites. There are around 30 GPS satellites orbiting the Earth, each one broadcasting signals to the ground at the speed of light. Your device, whether that's a phone, the sat-nav in a car, or an exercise monitor receives this signal. Because the sensor in GPS equipment is very sensitive, it can measure the exact time it took for the signal to get from the satellite to your device. The sensor can also determine which satellite sent the signal. As long as three signals from three satellites are received by your device, it can pinpoint its location on Earth, usually to within a few meters. This is known as triangulation. GPS used by itself can only tell you where you are in the world in terms of latitude and longitude. In order for that information to be of any real use, a second system is needed, and that's where GIS comes in. GIS stands for Geographic Information System. Unlike GPS, there is not one GIS, but many. A geographic information system would contain the type of information you would find on a map. This information would be stored on the device itself within some sort of database. For satellite navigation, the most important GIS information would relate to roads. The user of a satnav does not need to know their latitude and longitude. They want to know which road they're on. This requires both systems. The global positioning system uses satellite signals to determine the current position of the user, or rather their device. The geographic information systems database is then checked to find out which road exists at that position, usually drawing it onto a screen. With additional data, the GIS allows calculation of a route between the current point and a destination. GIS is used widely within satellite navigation technology, but that is not the only application. It can be used to map crimes within a city, plot optimal routes around a field when planting or harvesting crops, or monitor traffic density. There are many other applications too, for any situation where a map is useful, geographic information systems can also be useful. And now, satellite systems. We know the Global Positioning Satellite as GPS, and also the satellite navigation, it's known as SatNav. Now, GPS systems are described to be used to determine the exact location of number of modes of transport like airplanes, cars, ships, etc. Now, cars usually refers to the GPS as satellite navigation system, which is the satnav. Now, how it works? As you see here in the picture, we have three satellites. They have the intersection, so this is the exact location of transport. Now, satellites surrounding the Earth transmit signals to the surface. Computers installed in the mode of transport receive and interpret these signals. Knowing their position on the earth depends on very accurate timing, which is now we are talking also about the timing and the uh, motion of the earth. Atomic clocks are used in the satellites which are accurate to within a fraction of a second per day. Each satellite transmits data indicating its position and time. The 
computer on board, the mode of a transport calculates its exact position based on the information from at least three satellites, as we see here. Now, in cars, the onboard computer contains stored road maps. With these sat-nav systems, the car's exact location, based on the satellite positioning, can be shown on the map, and the driver can also be given verbal instructions, such as, after 100 meters, take the next left, turn on the road or the way, A1234. A screen on the sat-nav device will also show the car's position in relation to the road network, as we used to use in our cars. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this GPS and sat-nav? Advantages are the driver does not have to consult paper maps. It is far, far safer rather than using these road maps. Also, it removes the errors. The system can warn the driver about the location of speed cameras. The system can estimate the time of arrival. It's also possible to program the fastest route, uh, route to avoid towns also. The system can also give useful information, such as a location of petrol station or restaurant or uh, the thing that you are interested in. Now, disadvantages. If the map are not maps are not kept up to date, they can give incorrect instructions, and this is you can find it happening. Unless the system is sophisticated, road closures due to accidents or road works can cause problems. Loss of satellite signals can cause problems because you are depending on this system, so you will be lost. If any, if an incorrect start point or end point is keyed in the system, this will give incorrect information for sure. Now the GIS, Geographic Information System. It is a computer system that allows us to map, model, query, and analyze large amounts of data according to their location. GIS allows users to create interactive queries, analyze spatial information, like editing data of map. The technology combines maps with computer graphics and database. Now, essentially, GIS enables the following. Amalgamation of information into easily understood maps. Also, performance of complex analytical calculations and then presentation of the results in the form of maps like tables, graphics. Also, geographers, scientists, and engineers are able to see the data in several different ways in order to see the patterns and relationships. So this is the GIS. Now how it works, it's working at, like layering the uh, map. Here we have the state boundaries. Now I have the emission monitoring location and the national parks. If we combine these layers together, I can find this whole map as complete map. Now, carrying out queries on GIS systems will produce the data which matches the query. Now, the data will be displayed in form of diagram, map, or set of tables. By zooming into the map, it's possible to find finer details about layering data used. So, we also use this GIS in our maps when we want to uh, navigate or to find something. Now, the users. Emergency services use the GIS to send the closest emergency personnel to a location. Biologists and environmentalists use the GIS to protect animal life and plants in certain vulnerable areas. 
Also, teachers can use the GIS in their geography, science, or engineering lessons for their students. Now, media communication systems. Communication media refers to the methods of delivering and receiving data or information using the telecommunications. We have many ways and media to send and receive the information, like fiber optics, copper, cables, Wi-Fi, and so on. But here we will talk about global communication methods using satellite. Satellites contain antennas, transponders, like a Y to allow receiving and sending data, solar panels for the power of the sun, and propulsion to ensure that the satellite is in the correct orbit at all the time. Now, signals are converted to analog if it is necessary and then beamed to the satellite from satellite dish on the Earth. Now, this is the dish on the Earth and this is the one in the space with the solar panel and the antenna and also the propeller session. Now, each signal has its own frequency and bandwidth. The larger bandwidth, the more data can be transmitted, as we know. Now, once the data reaches the satellite, it's then resent to the Earth. The satellite usually boosts the signal before sending it back to the Earth to make it strong signal. Often the frequency is changed to prevent the signal received being confused with the signal sent. The satellite system is used to transmit data from one part of the planet to another. Due to the often great distances, cables would be too costly and there is also problem of signal detonation over the long distances satellites and satellite systems used to transmit television telephone and internet data around the world by this we are finishing our lesson have a nice day and see you again